who might be familiar with her from LinkedIn, uh, Mrs. Susan Walsh, the classification guru. I literally cannot say just Susan Walsh. I have to say the classification guru. It sort of just makes sense. And the topic of her talk today is between the spreadsheets. Yes, you heard that right. With a decade of experience fixing your dirty data, Susan Walsh is the classification guru. Susan is the founder and managing director of the Classification Guru Limited, a specialist data classification, taxonomy, customization, and data cleansing consultancy. She is an industry thought leader, TEDx speaker, and author of the newly published book, Between the Spreadsheets, Classifying and Fixing Dirty Data. She's also the founder of Coat. Now, Susan is kind enough to give away two copies of her book today, so please go ahead and use the hashtag spreadsheets in order to participate. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you could see exactly, um, you know, the, the word we're using here. A lot of times it's, it's helpful to see it on screen. So if you want to participate, just use hashtag spreadsheets. We're going to select two winners at the end of her talk. So go ahead and put that into the comments wherever you're joining us from LinkedIn, YouTube or other platforms. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring up Susan Walsh on our virtual stage. Hey. Evan, you're here. Welcome to the Dedicated Expo. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me and thank you for changing your top for me as well. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, anyways, <laughs> I, I have not done that. You're just, you know, you're confused, I think. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. Just I see, it. Yeah. I want to see how many times I can change with uh with people no not noticing that I've been changing. I have a lot of dedicated shirts that I did not know which one to wear, so I decided. Um, to wear them all today. I like the I love data one. That was cute. Oh, that was actually from Kristen Kerr uh, from Data Moves Me. She sent me that one. So that's a really cool one. But don't want to waste any more of your yeah. time here. I'm going to hop off the stage and let you Thank take you. it away for the next 10 minutes. Thanks so much, Kate. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Susan Walsh, the classification guru. If you don't know me, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. I am so excited to talk to you today about Between the Spreadsheets, um, fixing dirty data. So what am I going to be talking about? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself because that's my favourite subject. Then I'm going to talk about what is dirty data because we're all working with different types of data. And then what are the consequences of that dirty data? And then how can you ensure that data accuracy? followed by a little bit of how to maintain and spot check your data in Excel. Then I'm just going to briefly touch on other tools because we're all using different tools in the world these days. The common one that we have is Excel. Then I am going to share with you the dirty data maturity model, which you are going to love. And then finally, I'm going to summarize everything. So without further ado, let's tell you a little bit about myself, if you don't already know. I fell into data by complete accident and after my first business failed I was desperate for a job and found an ad online and that is where I found my love and my passion for data and after five years of being there that is when I set up the classification guru and I've been doing that for the last four years and as you can see I'm working across the whole globe in multiple languages I'm doing data classification normalization taxonomy customization, cleansing databases, and more exciting than that, you've already heard about it, but I have a book and it's out and I'm so excited about it. And it's called Between the Spreadsheets, Classifying and Fixing Dirty Data. So get those hashtag spreadsheets in so that you, that you get the chance to possibly win one at the end. But that's enough about me. What is dirty data? Well, First of all, it can be something like misspelt words. You will find this in descriptions, names, etc. It could be incorrect descriptions, something that doesn't even relate to the product that it actually is or whatever it is. Um, and then missing codes as well can be really common. People don't set up products properly on a system. Oh, I'll go back and put the code in later and then it doesn't happen. Then there's data in their own columns. How many times have you found a zip code or a postcode in the county or town column? And of course, no standard units of measure. So, you know, are we talking liters spelt multiple different ways or, you know, 
different you know meters or inches all that kind of stuff so it, it can get messy and then currency issues as well can be a problem and also rounding within that so you know it can make uh, things not add up and make data very very messy and then there's formatting so i have just done a couple of polls on linkedin and oh my goodness the problems that we have with date formatting nobody can agree on a standard i know there's an iso standard but nobody wants to use it or very few people do um and they're using different formats for different things so in excel it might be one format and then for file naming conventions it's something completely different so that can cause a whole range of product problems and of course, it can lead to our good old friends, the duplicates as well. Now, I spend a lot of my time classifying spend data. So I wanted to share a couple of examples of what dirty data looks like in my world. So the first one I wanted to share with you was LinkedIn. So somebody classified this as a restaurant because the description said restaurant. And the reason that I want to share this example with you is because context is so important. You can't look at a single column, a single row or a single cell. You, you could look at the row, but you need to look at the data as a whole to get the context of what's going on. Because, yes, the description does say restaurant. But actually, we all know what LinkedIn is. This is how we all met. We networked. We are training. We're getting jobs on it. We are not getting food from LinkedIn. And then the second one is around assumptions. So Tinder Corporation came up in data for a UK company, a charity that I was doing some work for. Uh, and when I saw this, I thought there's no way that they could be working with Tinder. Absolutely not. And of course, the description didn't add up with my assumption of what the Tinder, what Tinder was. So when I did some digging, I found out that Tinder UK Limited is actually an IT services company. So never assume because it can get you in trouble. And of course, it's the same with normalization. Granger is a great example of where in the UK it's a house builder and in the US it's hardware and things like that. So it's really important to never just assume, always check and use the data to guide you. So why should we bother about this? Well, you're going to save time uh, if you get it right first time. It's going to be costly to rectify. It's going to affect the decision making processes. It's going to impact all areas of the business. It's wasted money. Um, GDPR, we've heard about this. If you don't have your data right, it's not just good enough to store it securely. You have to have the right and accurate data as well. And that can cause reputational damage if you don't get that right. And the cost of that can be far greater than any financial um, cost. And of course, dirty data makes your life more difficult. So who wants that? But, you know, these are all negative things. What could there be good things? that if we've managed to keep our data nice and clean and tidy? Well, absolutely, we would save time. We would be more efficient. We would increase profitability for ourselves, our own businesses or our employers. And you would hope that if it's your employer, they would then pass that on to you in the form of bonuses, etc. So that's the incentive for keeping your data clean as well. So what about the consequences of dirty data? Well, what about reporting and decision making? We've seen some great chats from Avery around data visualization, but actually what if that data is wrong? Um, and I will show you that in a minute, because before that, the consequences are in reporting and decision making, it's cost savings, it's going to affect things like supplier negotiations, it's going to affect things like supplier rationalizations, um, if you're doing normalization, forecasting, dirty data is going to have an effect on that. Budgets. Imagine if you could have more budget for your business, but but you don't because the data is wrong. What about targeting the right customers? Um, you are mailing, posting, emailing, spending time contacting people that are not your right client. That's a waste of time and money. And then things like shipping the right products. You know, if you've got the wrong codes, missing information, you could be not just sending out the wrong product to your customer, but you're at the costs of the shipping and all the warehousing time that to fix it all. It all adds up. Now, this is where it gets good. Analytics. Here are some unnormalized suppliers. So this is something that I would see in my job quite a lot. Uh, lots of different suppliers, but actually a lot of them look kind of similar. When they're normalized, that picture changes a lot. Suddenly you only have four suppliers and the spend with them is, is significantly greater. And it might not be spend in your data, it might be sales or uh, usage of products or materials. 
but it's significantly different and will affect the decisions, things like forecasting as well and production. Um, so it's really important to, to make sure that everything's normalized and categorized properly. And then there's technology implementation. We have heard about that today. Um, data cleansing is often neglected before it even starts. Um, and the problem with that is the errors are only discovered post implementation. And staff lose faith in the data, they become disengaged, they claim it doesn't work, and they don't trust it because it's wrong. And it's going to cost a lot of money to fix. Then you have to hope that staff will adopt the technology after it's been fixed and they might have lost faith. You might have to abandon that project. It could be costly. And we've also heard about AI and machine learning today. Well, actually, guess what? That's the same. You have to have clean, prepared data before you start on and embark on these projects. AI learns from training data sets. If they are wrong, it's going to learn the wrong thing. Very much the same with machine learning. If you're basing codes and rules based on data sets, if it's not right, it's going to spread wrongness, even that, if that is a word. And it is the old adage. We've already heard it today. I'm going to say the UK version, which is rubbish in and rubbish out. So how can we ensure any data accuracy for this? Well, Firstly, there's no quick fix shortcut or magic button that's going to do this. You have to have people looking at it, hopefully, who are experienced in that area. You have to get the whole organisation involved. It's everybody's responsibility. You have to agree those common standards, terms and processes. You have to maintain and refresh your data and you have to spot check it regularly. And how can you help do that with between you and all your team? Well, you can make sure your data has its coat on. And if you don't know what quote is, I'm going to tell you now. It is something that anybody, data or non-data within your organization can remember. It's consistency. So using those same terms and processes, it's organization, categorize it so you can find it easily. It's accurate so that you know you can trust it. And when you have all that, you will have trustworthy data. And then there's maintenance and spot checking the data. So. Very quickly, you get a pivot table in Excel, you put it in a tabular form, you remove the subtotals, and suddenly you can start to see when things don't look right. And you might want to add in extra levels of detail to check as well, um, or reverse it, you know, and sometimes we do like supplier description, actually check it by category, because sometimes other things will pop out. And of course, that's Excel. It's laborious. It's hard. It doesn't like large data sets. There are a number of different tools out there. I always get asked about mine. My choice, tool of choice is Omniscope, but you could apply these methods to this as well. And then finally, I'm just going to very quickly touch on the dirty data maturity model. We have our dirty data. That's the bottom of the pile. Then we have our declassed data, our distributed data. If you're a bit better than that, you have disordered data. And of course, the pinnacle is dirt-free data. But don't be fooled by that. Once you've reached the, the pinnacle of dirt-free data, you have to work really hard to keep it there. You can't just rely on it being correct and leave it. And if you want to know more, there's plenty about it in the book. So that's it. I have totally run over time, which I said I wasn't going to do. So I'm just going to tell, tell you quickly, there are no shortcuts there. You have to know and maintain your data. You have to agree common standards. You have to get everybody involved in the organization and you have to make sure your data has its coat on. And finally, these are my details. Don't forget the book. Um, connect with me, scan the QR code and um, I will answer as many questions as I can. Thanks very much. All right, thank you so much, Susan. Ooh. Amazing presentation, and you're right on time, so don't worry about oh, that. That's good. Thank you, thank you. You, cover, you covered a lot in 10 minutes. I did, so I did. We do have time for one or two questions. We're gonna take a question, do a giveaway, take another question, and do another giveaway. So Sounds quick good. reminder for people to participate in the giveaway, hashtag spreadsheets, and we're going to um, go ahead and jump to our first question here from Jose 
The question is, it's easy. Can we get this book on Amazon? You can, and Amazon anywhere in the world. Um, but we're depending on where you are in the world, it will either be available right now or within the next few weeks. So yeah, it's it's there. Um, there is another between the spreadsheets book, but it's not that it's not that one. It's 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 not the one with the people on the the cover. It's it's definitely this one. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead share my screen and we're going to hit draw for the very first winner all right and i'll write this do. name down yep drum roll let's do it <laughs> congratulations to Chandra. all right awesome we're gonna follow up after the... are you making a note of this or do i need to make a note i'm making a note i'm cool. making a note plus this is recorded it just makes it easier um to follow up later yeah. We did have a lot of comments back to you about dates, and it's just so far to scroll up. But oh. a lot of uh, people have very strong feelings for how you should be displaying dates. I know. it's. <laughs> if you go and look at my two previous polls, there's a lot of discussion about this. And nobody, <laughs> nobody agrees. <laughs> Um, and Mike just said he bought the wrong book. So <laughs> hopefully it's not too late to go back. <laughs> we'll take a question here from uh, Subadeep. He's asking, can most data not be fixed at the data collection stage? Wouldn't that be great if all data was just collected properly? Yeah, that's the dream. But a lot of the problems are a lot of the people who collect the data are not data people. And we have to train and change culturally their, their attitude towards data, you know, make it less intimidating mm -hmm. and, and let them understand the consequences of what happens when they don't fill it in properly. Okay, thank you. And we'll just take one more question before the um, the next giveaway. Filippo is asking, how do you usually clean the different uh, date formats? You know, honestly, I do it manually um, in my tool, Viso, uh, Omniscope from Visokio. Um, and actually, there's I don't think I've got a bit about dates in the book, but but I have a process. But you know, you know, sometimes there is no quick and easy option. Sometimes you just have to do it the hard way get in there yeah if Roll you want it right it has to be done and get dirty yes yeah get dirty between the spreadsheets guys yeah exactly <laughs> all right let's go ahead and do our next giveaway i'm gonna go ahead and draw again all right good luck everybody this is for the between the spreadsheets book from susan walsh if you don't win Definitely go to Amazon and pick it up. I've, I've ordered my copy. I'm still waiting for it. Remember this one. Yes. Valerie, congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, make sure you get the right book. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Susan, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here today at the Dedicated Expo. Thank and another so huge thank you for joining me for the first hour before we even went live to kind of set, help me set the stage. And look how so, fabulous you are. You're doing great. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Susan, we'll see you online. Follow Susan Walsh. She puts out great content. I will see you. Thank Bye. you so much.